So you're listening to Invention Number 13 by Bach, and it's going along swimmingly until you hear this. <laughs> What just happened? That's not what my ears expected. But then the music gets back on track. Everything is hunky-dory. Or so you think. And now that you're feeling all topsy-turvy and discombobulated because your ears did not get what they expected, my work here is done. <laughs> And aren't these musical sequences just like a kind of musical plaid shirt? Patterns repeating over and over again. I love plaid, as you know. <laughs> but can you imagine Bach wearing a plaid shirt? <laughs> well, hi there. It's me, Penny. Welcome back to my practice room. And you know, I've been putting up a lot of shorts lately where I take a sequence by Bach, just a couple bars, and I extend it multiple times. <laughs> I do it partly for kicks, but also because it, it gives the ear a chance to hear this music in a fresh new way. And if there's anything that we should be concerned with when we are practicing at the piano, it should be to bring new life to this ancient music. I think it was Wanda Landowska who, you know, cautioned against an approach where you look at this old music as though it were like frozen meat you pull out of the freezer and defrost it. No, it's not ancient in that way. We want to bring fresh life to it as though it were just written, as though we were just composing it, I think anyway. And taking these little sequential uh, passages and lengthening them helps my ears to uh, listen for new things in this music, surprises, and uh, it's also rather humorous and fun. Um, but perhaps most importantly, it makes us, it puts us kind of in Bach's shoes <laughs> and to think about the kinds of decisions that he had to make when he was composing. So what you just heard was uh, the first two sequences of invention number 13 in A minor. And these sequences, if my theory skills from <laughs> many years ago at Eastman School of Music are serving me well, uh, these are D2 by D5 sequences, descending second by descending fifth. As best I can tell, I am no theory teacher. Certainly, I'm a pianist. But that's what we have here, I think. Measure three and four. This little sequence, I'll play it again as Bach wrote it. So when I break up the, uh, when I take out sort of the main notes of that sequence, we get this. It's movement by step. That's always the case in these sequences, right? So we get. Two little links on the chain. And so it's that pattern. Descending down by step. By way of a fifth. That's the pattern. And I just kept it going for a few more times. <laughs> I just love my, I love to shock the ear once in a while. Let me play my extension now for you. It's kind of fun, right? <laughs> and uh, then the other sequence um, that I was playing around with was the one at measure Five. This is the sequence Bach gives us. So a couple of rotations. Um, like three rotations of this little musical sequence. And I extended it another uh, three bars. And as far as I can tell, 
Like the first sequence in measure three and four, this one is also descending second by way of a descending fifth. Descending by second by way of a fifth. And so here it is with my little three bars added. <laughs> We're trimming the tree with more decorations. <laughs> right? <laughs> it's easy to see, though, why it would be preposterous to keep going, because once we get down there in the bowels of the piano, as it were, uh, it's pretty hard to hear anything going on. Uh, you get best clarity when you're in the mid-range and uh, mid-range of the piano, and to a certain extent, some of the upper range, but very hard to hear anything way down there. Bach also didn't have those notes on his little harpsichord or his clavichord. <laughs> um, but uh, still, it's, it's curious for the ears and enticing uh, to want to hear more. You know, uh, well, I mean, I'm wearing a kind of plaid or checkered pattern on my shirt here. I do like plaid. <laughs> and uh, uh, things with uh, patchwork quilts, uh, checkered prints, um, art deco patterns, geometric shapes linking up. I love the visual aesthetics of that kind of thing. And uh, I, I guess it suggests order, <laughs> um, lines intersecting at very r recurring and reliable intervals. Um, and, and I think about plaid <laughs> and checkered prints and Frank Lloyd Wright architecture and geometric shapes when I encounter sequential passages such as these in box music. I yeah. hear this in the music whenever I come to a sequence, and I think these sequence, sequential moments in Bach are meant to delight the ear, are meant to give relief uh, to the more strenuous <laughs> imitative passages where we might have a subject in a fugue uh, in conversation with multiple other voices. Um, but sequences are a little bit more like some whipped cream. They're little, a little lighter on the ear. And they're really just so much fun. Um, and uh, yeah, so that, that sequence then at measure five from Bach. I extended it. It's just the same pattern, links on a chain. And there's one more sequence that I did it for in this piece. Uh, that's the one, uh, measure 9 and 10. Let's hear what Bach wrote for those two measures. So two copies. Actually, he starts a third one, uh, but then it changes. <laughs> but you know me. <laughs> I extended it for another couple of bars, giving us this. It's fun, right? <laughs> and, uh, you know, I am no theory teacher, so I don't know. Perhaps there are some mistakes along the way. This is not meant to be a... Uh, exercise in sequential writing, but rather a chance to just play around with a little pattern and find a new way to listen to it so that when you're practicing, you're aware of these things and you take apart some of those main notes, those main notes of that last sequence that I just played, which is another D2 by D5. Uh, and that would sound like this. So descending by step, by second, by way of a descending fifth. Descending by step, or by second, by way of a fifth, down by step again, down a step again, right? 
I could keep it going infinitely. And I've done a number of other sequences. I've, I've done the uh, aria, that's the fourth movement from the fourth partita. That one, I started it uh, just, uh, I think there were three bars. That one was, uh, yeah, measure 35 to 37. I started it at the top of the piano, went all the way to the bottom. Uh, <laughs> uh, I took one from the overture in the French style. The first movement of that uh, measures 51 to 53. Um, another one from the Italian concerto, also from the F major invention number eight. Works the same way. Actually, the way I kind of got caught up in this sequence business was that I, because as I say, I've always loved <laughs> box sequences. I even have a little folder here that I started. That was the video that never was, but that turned into all these shorts I've been making. <laughs> I went through the Bach pieces that I have played and a few that I have not played, um, and just basically wrote down all the sequences that I could find. Um, there's a lot of them. It took me a while. And I was going to select from there some of the ones that I thought were the most uh, delicious. But then I was having some hard time uh, analyzing them in the proper theoretical way. And so, you know, um, best to just approach these as a pianist. Um, for that's what I'm doing. So I do hope that this is uh, another tool to add to your toolbox and uh, play around with it. When you find some sequences, you know, the famous one, the Pachelbel's Canon. <laughs> That's another sequence, which is a D3 by D4, if I recall correctly from our theory class. Descending third by way of a descending fourth. So C down to G, that's the descending fourth. Up a step to A, down to E. So we went from C to A by way of a fourth. Descending third by descending fourth. just so catchy and uh, they, they were so popular in the Baroque era in particular. So when you encounter these sequences in your repertoire, do take a moment to play around with them a little bit and give your ears a fresh take on this ancient music. In the description of this video, I'll link the shorts that I've made where I extended the sequences and those other pieces I was telling you. And uh, I don't know, if I get the yen, I'll uh, perhaps extend some more. <laughs> I may have had my fix for, for that for a while. We shall see. Uh, but thanks for watching, and I hope you're all well. Happy practicing, stay safe, and we'll see you again soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>